Hi everyone, today I'm gonna show you how to run an OLED display with an Arduino. This video will cover a drawing basic text, shapes and scroll. Let's go! This one is the most popular OLED display, but there are some points of confusion like 3.3 versus 5 volts, I2C versus SPI communication or SSD versus SH drivers. So most of this display can tolerate both 3.3 and 5 volts, so it's not a problem. If your OLED has SCL and SDA pins, of course, it's an I2C display. If you see pins like DC or CS, it's SPI. This one uses I2C, so I'll be focusing on that today. Lastly, your display might look identical like mine, but use a different driver. They are very similar. Mine has SH1106 driver, but I've already run it on SSD 1306 library without any major issues. However, keep in mind that some artifacts or shifts can occur. This is because this one SH GDD RAM, graphic display data RAM, it's 132 columns wide, while the more popular SSD 1306 is 128 columns wide. For drawing simple text, you probably don't need to worry about this, but if you plan on programming some detail animations, it's something worth mentioning. Today I am using Arduino Nano 3 Free Blessings, but if you have a different version, don't worry, I'll explain step by step how to use it with more common boards. By the way, the Uno or Classic Nano use the exact same pins. This is the pinout. Sorry for the colors, it's quite messy, but I'll try to explain it very clearly. Let's load the code. Okay, VCC is connected to 3.3 volt ground. It's connected to ground, SCL serial clock to A5 pin, NSDA serial data to A4 pin. That's because in this Arduino, A4 and A5 pins are featuring I2C communication. Looks fine, now let's jump straight to the code. Okay, I assume you have Arduino ID already installed. First, we have to also install two basic libraries. Adafruit graphics and Adafruit SSD driver. If you are not familiar, you can just go to the libraries and type SSD1306. But mine is already installed. Then we define screen width and screen height. Initialize the display passing width, height and wire. Wire is responsible for handling I2C communication. And last argument, it's for reset pin. If you don't have one, just set it to minus one and it will be okay. In the setup while calling .begin, keep in mind the default address for most cases is 0x3c, but if this snippet doesn't work, try to use I2C scanner script to check your display I2C address. But for 99% cases, this one is okay. Then clear display, set text size, this have to be int as far as remember, it's from 1 to 8. Set text color, uh, here it's white, even my display is blue but it's just the information for the driver to activate the pixel on the canvas. GFX library is designed to work with both monochrome and multicolor displays. On a monochrome like mine and probably yours, white state in this library is mapped to logical one, so you can use them interchangeably. Anyway, don't worry about it unless your OLED is not monochrome. Set cursor, that's the starting point of your text. Simple print line to print any text you want and dot display to actually display it. And that's it, void loop in this case is empty because we need just to initialize it once. Works as expected, let's try to scroll it. Scrolling is very simple, display object exposes method start scroll right, where arguments are start and stop points of the scroll, in this case right, but there are also other directions available. This configuration creates cool animation, which disappears on the right side and reappears on the left side. To draw the shape, we have to just add one line. I'll show you the triangle, but there is a bunch of other shapes available. We have seven arguments, but they are pretty straightforward. You probably should know that uh, every triangle has three vertices, and these are coordinate of the first point, second point, and third point. White is just obligatory param, similar like in line 16. And that's basically it. You can also easily draw circles, squares, pixels, and many more. Works as expected. There is a small overlay, but this is the effect I wanted to achieve. Last thing, let's try to display some images on the display. 
To do that, we first have to convert typical image to one bit monochrome. I already prepared simple Python script for that. I'll share the full code with you in the description. There are two functions. Basically one just converts normal photo to CRA. Second one is a helper, allows to view the results. I've already converted the YouTube logo. Let's check them up. To improve the quality, you should play, for example, with the contrast, but that's besides the scope of this video, so I will skip that. I'm gonna copy the generated array to the Arduino script and use the function show bitmap. We can remove uh, triangle and scroll. First and second argument are coordinates, starting coordinates. Third one is our big array. To be more consistent, I replace it with screen width and screen height. And let's test it. As I said before, you can improve the quality by adding some preprocessing steps, but it works pretty well. You can see some flickering, but it's because of the frame rate of my camera. Normally it's not visible. That's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more and hopefully see you soon.